Jordan and Tim, and uh, we did the projectile project, and we made a little name for it, Robot, Berkeley Robot for Ballistic Offensive Targeting um, in a game setting. So our project, once again, was to take a ping pong ball and be able to shoot it into like a cluster of cups using strategy, using a, a Kinect camera, or, and it can basically identify which container to shoot for and launch, like I said, the ping pong ball into the target. Um, like I said, we use the Connect to determine which target to shoot into, and we're using an air-based pneumatic system to shoot the actual ping pong ball. So McCool's going to take over a vision system. So the goals for the vision system were to detect a cup and detect a flying ball and be able to track it. Um, it needs to know how far a cup is and how far offset it is from the center line so that it can adjust the launcher accordingly and hit the cup. And it tracks the ball to do a little bit of machine learning if it misses or realize that it hit a cup. So to detect cups, we're using color filtering. Uh, the red cups stand out for the background pretty well. So the strategy is just to um, make a binary image, which is a purely black and white image, based on the amount of red at each spot in the original image. And we'll show you that. Uh, and then filter it using a median blur and smoothing filter so that there's less noise and find all the contour lines and bound them with rectangles. So the largest rectangle uh, should be the largest red object, and then we just find the center of that and find the distance to that. All right, so the Connect camera um, has two sensors that it uses to collect depth information and uh, an RGB camera and also like a microphone array. Um, the depth information that it gets uh, is reported as just an array of uh, raw data. They come as, uh, we read them as 8-bit integers and we needed to, uh, c we needed to uh, map how these uh, relate to actual physical distances and then uh, derive a, a regression curve for it and uh, <clears throat> use that to calculate the distance that we need to launch a ball depending on the raw data, uh, the raw distance to a cup that the Kinect reports. So this is the data that we collected in increments of uh, four inches away. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, the x-axis is the raw data, the, these uh, integers that it reported and the uh, y-axis is the uh, physical distances that we manually measured with a, with a uh, tape measure. We plotted this out and then uh, got that cubic polynomial uh, from, this, from this data, and it pretty accurately maps uh, any raw data that we collect now to physical distance. Yeah, so with that function, um, during, or in the middle of our range, which is like two feet to six feet, uh, we're usually off by no more than like a third of an inch in estimating distance to cups. So uh, one of the other things we also tried to do was detect if a cup is removed. So we save at each state the offset and the distance to the cup it's choosing right now. And we use a low-pass filter to avoid getting messed up by anomalies. And uh, when at each frame, it sees if the new value is a lot different from what it had before. And if it's like that for a few frames in a row, then it assumes that it uh, that that cup is removed because it's now picking a new target. Okay. So for tracking the ball, we tried using a similar, this was the first thing we tried, it was similar to what we did for cups. Uh, we filter based on orange, and when we know the machine is firing, then we track the ball at all points. So if the ball's Y value drops below the cup when we can still see the ball, then we know it fell short. Uh, otherwise, we know it either went inside or went long, and we can use the final distance to figure that out. But unfortunately, this didn't end up working out. All right, so in working with the Connect towards this application, we encountered a number of significant challenges based on the design of the Connect. It's uh, designed to be a natural user interface, something that makes it easy with, for uh, humans to interact with the machine that uh, it's operating as the interface for. Um, so it's not really designed to track small, fast-moving objects moving like towards or, or away from it. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, distance, the depth data that it reports uh, sort of uh, saturates as uh, 
the distances get further, and um, it really limited, it kind of limited our range for tracking uh, objects like cups and balls to uh, shorter than we wanted it to be, at least in terms of like high accuracy. But um, primarily, it uh, prevented us from accurately tracking a ping pong ball in flight. Uh, one of our aspirations was to detect where exactly the ping pong ball uh, missed the cups. <laughs> and to do that, we needed to track you know, a ping pong ball from the moment it entered a frame until its disappearance, which is a split second, and it's a tiny ping pong ball uh, moving pretty far away from our, from our camera. And it had a really hard time doing that despite, you know, any filtering or, uh, uh, you know, tr circle tracking that we tried to do or a high pass filter. Um, it, it had a lot of difficulty with that, and we think it probably could have been prevented with, or uh, affected by changing a, choosing a different device, maybe something with higher resolution or stronger, uh, uh, stronger depth sensor or like some sort of zoom uh, capability. But we made do with what we had. Um, so uh, some of the other <coughs> major challenges we faced were uh, the variable lighting conditions strongly affected the thresholds that we needed to set for detecting red objects. We needed to set thresholds for the uh, HSV uh, colors that we're trying to filter, which is hue, saturation, and value. Uh, and in variable lighting conditions, the cups will reflect in different ways or just be shaded in different ways. And uh, it kind of took us a while to calibrate that, but for the room that we're going to be demoing it in today, we, we seem to have a pretty good, uh, pretty good calibration set up. Uh, so <clears throat> one of the alternative approaches that we took, one of our challenges was that reporting red, uh, red blobs, I guess, couldn't exactly distinguish cups very easily, especially if they're in a tight cluster. So after we um, finished our implementation just by tracking red, we decided to go explore an alternative approach, uh, knowing that we probably wouldn't be able to fully implement it with our system, but thought it would be interesting to check out anyway. Uh, we adjusted the situation by lining the interiors of the cups with uh, <coughs> light green uh, poster board paper. It's really easy to filter. Uh, <coughs> that's why they use like green screens and stuff in, in movies, it turns out. So uh, applying this filter, we could get, uh, do you want to go back for a second? We could get these ellipses, and then we could track the ellipses by this, uh, yeah, go ahead. We could track these ellipses by uh, drawing contours on them. The estimated area of these ellipses, we could get the, you know, the major radius, uh, the major axis radius and the minor axis radius for the uh, ellipse, estimate the area that it was supposed to be, and then compare it with the actual area of the contour. And if it was within a certain threshold, then we determined that it was, in fact, an ellipse. And, uh, and it's something we should track and report the distance to. So we, our hardware is, you know, just the, for the vision system at least, is just the Kinect camera. It's got an infrared laser and a uh, <coughs> monochrome sensor for uh, seeing, uh, getting a 3D image in ambient lighting conditions uh, and a microphone array and a little servo motor that allows it to go up and down, but we didn't use for our application. So the software you, we used for the vision part was Open Connect because it lets you, it basically just lets you get all the data from the Connect on any operating system. And then we also used OpenCV for our image and video processing. It's a pretty powerful library of uh, stuff which includes filters, um, creating binary images, and edge detection, and a little bit of identifying shapes like circles and ellipses. All right, now to talk about the second ha <coughs> half of the project, the launcher system. This is the second system that we're working on. So for our approach for this, um, our goal was to create a consistent launching mechanism that was going to be accurate, something that we could give it a distance data from the connect in terms of um, how far out something is, how far over it is, control an arm that has our launcher on it, and then shoot accurately to that target. So we control the, the valve timing, which uh, so it's an air system, so there's electronic valve, and ho we will hold it open for a certain amount of time. And in order to control that, we use the Arduino, and we just have um, like we hold it, we send it a high signal for a, a delay that we user the user can input, or like any code can send over the serial com uh, port for it, and then it just holds that open. And then the pitch and yaw are adjusted with the servos on the arm. Um, and one of our goals was to recalibrate the angles based on data that we got from the Kinect in terms of ball tracking, which we were not as successful with. So in terms of hardware, Kinal's going to take this over.
All right. So there's three main parts to our hardware. One is the regulator. The regulator, uh, CO2, if you have it coming out of the tank regularly, it comes out really, really like a lot of pressure, like 3,000 PSI. So we need to get that down to somewhere in between 15 to 100 PSI because we weren't really sure exactly how much we would need to push the ball. The next was the uh, electronic valve, solenoid valve. And so this one is a little bit complex. So what, or what we had to do is get a specific part so that we can actually um, push a certain amount of air at a regular type of time using the Arduino. And the last part is the barrel. And the barrel is a you know, piece of tubing. It's just PVC pipe. And inside of it, we've lined paper to make it almost like a shotgun type of approach where the ball is put in there and then the pressure just pops it straight into one of the cups. Uh, so this is the Arduino. Arduino is just pretty simple. It takes you know, USB input, and then we can send like digital PWM outputs from the Arduino. This is a little circuit that we created. Um, just technical-wise, uh, we use an NPN transistor to act as a switch uh, to sh open and close the valve. Some weird things that we did is we, you know, destroyed one of our Arduino boards because we didn't have this. Uh, diode right here to make sure that the specifically with solenoid valves you have to make sure that the voltage doesn't come across again and fry your board so that was an important thing maybe you guys all if you ever do this and the other thing was the, the dynamixel um servos and for this part we had to take the the different servos and and use it to create the two axes the degrees of um changing for the actual launcher so We'll show you later in our demo where we have the um, computer actually controlling the pitch and yaw of this by RS-485 serial connection. And the launcher is just zip-tied all the way on the arm. You want to talk about software? So the software that we um, had to use there for the Dynamixel servos, they have their own um, SDK that came with it. So we used that to control, the, um, to control the arm. You can control that from C or C++. Uh, our final version controls it from just from a C's, from a program written in C. And uh, in order for controlling the arm, we needed to model, you know, we we're going to decide to keep the air cons constant and then modify the angle to determine how far and what and how far left, right, and how far distance our uh, launcher would shoot. So we took um, the launcher and held it straight and took a lot of data points. We shot a lot of different things and then mapped an equation to use off of that, that um, all those data points. We used a regression model to make a quadratic function that modeled the um, flight of the ball, essentially. And um, yeah, other than that, we can talk about it. So in terms of technical challenges, we had one of the biggest ones we faced was the accuracy of the launcher. So when we started out, we were using we didn't really know what to use in terms of PSI and stuff and um, valve timing, so we experimented a lot with that and then found out that it's actually much more accurate for us if we use a low PSI and a quick valve timing to just kind of create that pop and not have any sort of um, air currents behind it. So if, when we used a long valve timing, it would basically shoot it and the air would still be blowing behind it and create some sort of weird arc on it. Um, also, there was friction within our original barrel setup or not enough friction, so we had to find out how snug of a fit we wanted for um, the proper like shot to make it consistent. So to do that, we mod we played a, lo a lot with like uh, the width of the barrel, how long it was, other things like that, and we were able to uh, achieve like an ideal accuracy for what the, how big our targets were with um, a short barrel with a very airtight um, width to it. So it's very snug on the ping pong ball. It makes it just kind of pop out. And the shorter range kind of minimizes the effects of any sort of other air currents in the air or draft in the room. Because if you shot it way too far or too high up in the air, we noticed that it would tend to just be waver a little bit. And that effect over six feet gets kind of multiplied. And you can see it, it gets, looks pretty bad. Also, we found that even loading it slightly different, like a different depth into the barrel, will create problems. So we came up with a system for uniform loading. So the overall system, when we were interfacing between the vision and projectile systems, it was a little bit complex. I mean, just because we were working on Windows for one machine or for the projectile stuff, and we were working on Linux on the other. But uh, we just had to convert the launcher software and then remake some of the different SDKs to make us convert some or port basically the code from Windows to Linux. And, you know, different effective ranges on the connect modifying our code in the projectile system to account for those different changes 
was uh, you know slightly problematic, but for the most part, we were able to pull it together and have a pretty much synonymous system where both of them interface together and are able to communicate with each other. And uh, I think we should move to a demo. Or do you want to do the other slides? Um, we have five minutes left. So. Let's just finish up the other slides, and we'll go through yeah, them. Sure. Um, in conclusion, uh, you know we we had a pretty accurate shooting system. I mean, shooting into cups is a little bit difficult. If you're off by even like an inch, then it'll just hit off the side of the cup. Um, we have equations for determining the uh, proper angles of the, the the actual projectile system, the launching system, based off our connect data, which gives us distance. And, you know, we learned a lot about interfacing with the mechanical system. The mechanical system has a lot of little different things. One of our primary issues is that regulator isn't exactly on a specific amount of PSI. Sometimes it goes a little up by three or four PSI, down by two, then that messes up our uh, shooting. And yeah, I mean, our future steps, like we can do a lot more testing with the launching system, uh, a learning algorithm for um, calibration on the, the projectile system, and maybe improving the vision system a little more to track balls, possibly. And thanks so much to Zach and Winthrop for their help on the project. And thank you all. We'll go check out the demo now. Cool. So you guys.